Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Joe Brownlee here, and you're tuning in for question number four of the final exam review for intermediate algebra at Palm Beach State College. So let's get to it. All right, so the directions for question number four say to write the equation in standard form of the line satisfying the given conditions. All right. So they want us to write the equation of a line that goes through the point 5 comma 2 and has a slope of negative 4 over 7. All right, we'll put that aside and deal with what they've given us. Well, I see that they've given us a point and they've given us a slope. So let's go ahead and, and review a form that we haven't yet talked about in questions one through three. And this is going to be the point slope form. And you may recall that the point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times quantity x minus x sub one. And of course, x sub one and y sub one are going to correspond to my point. So x one, y one. And the m in my point slope form simply corresponds to the slope of the um, line they've given us. So really all we're gonna do is take the given information and plug it into our point slope form and solve. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have y minus y1, <coughs> excuse me, equals, let's plug in our slope, so negative 4 over 7 times quantity x minus x sub 1, but we'll go ahead and plug in our x value. And that is our equation with just the information plugged in. So now let's go ahead and start simplifying and making sense out of this. Well, I have y minus 2, when I distribute my negative, this becomes a minus 2 equals negative 4 over 7. Open my parentheses. I have x minus positive 5. So let's go ahead and distribute that negative to the positive 5, which is just going to give me an x minus 5. And then we'll go ahead and close our parentheses. Well, I see that I have a fraction here, and I don't know about you, but I always prefer to get rid of my fractions whenever I can. So let's go ahead and do that. And the way that we do that is by multiplying in three separate places by the common denominator. So the three places that we multiply are going to be here, my y, my y sub 1, and my actual m. And I can see that my common denominator is going to be 7. So let's multiply in each of these three places by 7 because remember we can really write y over 1, negative 2 over 1, and then of course our m is already in a fraction with a denominator of 7. So since I have 1 here in both of these denominators, I can make all three denominators really anything I want. So if I multiply this by 7, and I multiply this by 7, and multiply this by 7, then what I'm going to get is 7 times y simply gives me 7y. Negative 2 times 7, well that is going to give me a negative 14. And when I multiply negative 4 over 7 times 7, well that simply cancels out my sevens, so I've just been left with my numerator. And then of course nothing has happened yet with my parentheses. And so you can see by multiplying in these three positions by the common denominator I've been able to clear my fraction and now this looks a little more manageable to work with. Alright, so let's go ahead and simplify the right hand side of my equation now. So when I distribute my negative 4 to my x, I get negative 4x. And when I distribute my negative 4 to my negative 5, I get a positive 20. 
And now if we go back to the directions, they say that they want us to write this equation in standard form. And we've already reviewed uh, a little bit of standard form, but we'll go ahead and rewrite what standard form is here. So standard form, my x and my y are on one side of the equation, and my constant is on the other. Well, right now I see that I have my y on my left and my x on my right, so I know that that doesn't quite match up yet with my standard form, so I've got to change that. But I also see that my y is combined with a constant, and I have a constant on two sides, so again, doesn't quite add up. So let's go ahead and start rearranging this equation and get it to look something like standard form. Well, the first thing I can do is I can go ahead and bring my x term over. And when I do that, I'm left with 4x plus 7y minus 14 equals 20. So I'm a little bit closer. So now I have my x and my y terms on the left, so that checks out. But I still have this problem with constants being on both sides of the equation. So the last step I'm going to do is go ahead and move this 14 from the left to the right. And when I do that, I get 4x plus 7y equals 34. And now this looks pretty good. I have my x and my y, my x and my y, and my constant on the opposite side. So that looks good to me. All right, so that is how we write the equation of a line in standard form, given a point and a slope using the point-slope form. We simply plug in the information and simplify, and there we have it. And that was question number four. I hope this was a helpful review. I will see you all at question number five. Thanks for watching.